Well, this is a fun job. This is my Mark 7 Transit, which failed its MOT because it had a bit of rust in the sill and the driver's or passenger doorstep, depending on which country you're in. We're in the UK, so this is going to be the passenger side. The lovely thing about transits, as we all know, is they have a habit of rusting. So it's inevitable at some stage you're going to have to do this job. Universal truths, wherever you put the light, it's going to be in the wrong place and it's going to fall off when you've got all your kit on to do the welding or cutting because you knock it. Slightly annoying. What I did is I bought a kit of parts which I'm now merrily cutting up to fit. There's bits lying around all over the place. It was galvanised when I got it. It's got a layer of etch primer underneath it and zinc on top. Hopefully to slow down the inevitable. But what I chose to do was to replace the whole of the footwell simply because it should make a neater job. Even though it's all going to be covered up with plastic, I wanted it, the structural integrity to be back there and also to know that it's solid metal. So I've cut away anything that looked like it had rust on it. It's amazing I've got a van left, I hear you say. However, I digress on that. The hardest part of this job I've found so far is deciding which bits to cut out. So I took time to figure out A, where the rust was, and B, where I needed to cut to make it easy enough to get the panels in because they're going to have to be cut up, all these lovely panels. And I want to make sure I cut them in the right place so that they'll fit in nicely. Also, <laughs> the ironic thing is that the shuts that they put on at the Ford factory uh, is uh, in everywhere. It does its job for a while, then it lets the water behind it rot through, as we all know from... If you're watching this video, you'll know about transits. The other great thing is that it gets in everywhere, and when you start cutting and welding, the next thing you know is uh, you have Captain Fire Brigade there. The other great thing is the fuel tank is, as we know, on this side of the vehicle. And this lovely little pipe here, which I've repaired, is the venting pipe, which usually rots through, and when you get a full, or you fill your tank up, it sprays diesel on the floor. So that was the job I actually did on this one because it needed doing and uh, I finally got around to it and it made sense because if I'm welding close to that uh, the last thing I want is diesel everywhere however there's enough diesel over the underside of the vehicle to cause a potential problems so Freddy fire extinguisher is not far away anytime when I've got this kind of job going and if I have somebody around I get them on fire watch and making coffee which is cool we like coffee mmm nice okay so this is uh, the gaping hole I'm left with, and I figured out to try to make it the best I could to get it square. If you're cutting stupid little diamond shaped patches and weird patches, it really is a pain in the butt. So when you can, try and cut everything to squares, uh, or, or right angles at least, and straight lines, because they're a lot easier to replicate. What I'm gonna do with this section down here, because this is rotted off on the edge of the door here which holds the seal which is critical to keep whatever noise and shite out from the road it's done it both sides it was rotten a bit so I'm cutting the whole lot out because I don't want it to rot again but what I'm going to do is cut a slot through here so that piece of floor can go through and then this is the inner sill panel that should slide over there and give me some purchase to put that uh, seal back onto which is crucial quite frankly because otherwise you get whistling noises and other kinds of horrid things going on there are outriggers on the side here and here important to get those nice and clean while you can and remember you're working backwards and there's no point in putting your first panel in here and weld it all in then try and fit this sucker because you've got no space to work make sure you've cut all your panels inner sill footwell outer sill make sure you've cut all of those and that they fit before you start welding everything together and work on the order that they go in otherwise you could end up in a position where you physically can't move your welder you can't get into the actual uh, space you need or there's no room to put the panel in and then you're chopping around so if you're going to do the job think about it i mean i thought a long time about this 
how to do this and that's why I've ended up with this solution. It works for me. You may have had less rust in your panels um, than I did, I don't know. They're all different, they're all fun. But this is the full inside uh, footbed, inner sill and outer sill job on a Mark 7. The panels I bought, like I say, were galvanised. I bought the left and the right hand side from a company, I'll put it up on a link. Um, cost about £145, GB pounds. And I bought the left and the right because it actually worked out cheaper to do that. So when or if I need to do the right hand side, I can do that later. But uh, the individual panels, these sections here are about £50, £60 a piece. So for the cost of getting all the other bits, I'm glad I got all the other bits because the rot was significant, as you can imagine. But having all the other bits gives you the peace of mind to say, right, I can get on with this job, knowing I've got the inner, the outer and the middle to get on with it. This is another exciting feature of this particular production. Uh, it's a faithful reproduction, this um, item that I've purchased. It's spot welded together there with a seam that's open on the front and all the way around, just like the original. So what Ford did was uh, cram this full of seam sealer uh, because this is in direct line of the front wheel where all the um, road grit and slime gets blasted straight at it by the lovely wheel which is just here. No surprise, because yours is exactly the same place on your van. Net problem, because I've cut this section down here and that section around there, this flange is now in the way. And that flange is there to mate up onto this cross member. And the cross member, when I cut the other piece out, I snipped the end off it. So I, what I did was weld a tag back onto there to ensure that there was something to weld to, because there would be nothing worse then putting this neatly in, getting underneath there with my welding mask and my mask on because it stinks when you weld it with all the seam sealer going in your lungs, which you don't want. Um, to realize that in fact, uh, I had nothing to weld to and a gaping open end of that particular cross member. So I thought it's a good idea to put a tag on there to allow me to actually have something to weld to. Now what I'm gonna do is put seam sealer in this, chop that down fractionally and fold it over so it'll fit neatly into this corner here because this section is still going to run up against <coughs> against the front there. So that's the footwell. That's the remains of the old footwell, which is sound. I welded a big plate on it just to make sure that that was extra sound. So that's what I planned to do. So I thought I'd just show you that to say, get yourself some seam sealer. Brushable seam sealer. Very helpful. The other thing that's very, very essential on this particular job is zinc spray. This is 98% zinc because every time you put a weld on, it rusts instantly. And because I'm in the middle of an English summer here, it's, I was gonna say something rude. It's raining rather a lot on and off. So every time I weld, I cover it with zinc primer, which is weld through, but also instantly protects the weld to stop the corrosion starting before I finish the job. So, two useful things there, hopefully. So that section now is seam sealed, very lightly, simply because it's easier to do off the vehicle than lying on your back or under your ramps. I have to lie on my back because I don't have any ramps. Uh, it'll get more in the finished product and the reason I seam seal that is because now that I've cut it the way I have I'm not going to be welding in that area so I'm not going to be setting that on fire because it's very volatile this seam sealer you have to clean your brush almost immediately using paint thinners or wherever works for you um, I use cellulose thinners because I've got cellulose thinners and it seemed to work quite well Pet petrol probably do it as well uh, but yes that's the seam seal on that um, zinc sprayed on that bit of welding I just did and also I took the screws out of this, this the bolts out of the seat uh, I used a Torx but it's actually a ride bit T55 I used I got away with it which I was quite pleased with because these can seize in and leave the seat up and then I can put the flange on the top edge there through this gap here and tuck it out of the way and then back weld 
that to the new panel when it goes in. That's my plan. Let's see how it works out. As with a lot of these things, um, it's worth doing little jobs as you go along because it saves, well, while well, you've got the vehicle in, you may as well do them. There were some little scratches on the wheel arches which I needed to sort out for some other MOT welding that I've already done on the van. Pretty straightforward stuff. But I noticed that there was wet under the carpet, um, the rubber matting when I lifted it up, and I wondered where that had come from. And I just noticed here, I've, I've dug it out now, but there was a tiny split with a little bit of rust on the edge of it. So out comes Faithful Chisel, in goes Faithful Chisel, and that's what it's exposed. So that's where the water was getting in underneath these mats, which eventually would make the mats, the whole van stink. But it's something that's been drying out for a while. And that's another little job that can get easily fixed while we've got the, the vehicle in this position. So yeah, if you see a hole, you know that it's like an iceberg. Might not be much, and the minute you start digging at it, it just gets bigger. Mind you, senior transit people, you know that already. So nothing new there, but uh, at this point was just basically find the jobs, get them done, while you've got all the kit out, while you've got the metal out, while you're in the frame of mind to do it, just get it done. That could probably fiberglass up quite nicely, that one, that would, that would save the problem. Okay, universal truths again. I've just sliced this section off here with my trusty grindler, with a, I call them a suicide blade on it, cutting blade. Always keep the guard on that, always wear your full kit because they can really make a right mess of you when they shatter because they sometimes catch an edge, shatter. And just look on the internet, you'll see some lovely photographs of people with these buried in their faces. So, goggles, good gloves, earmuffs, mask as well because again, remember this is galvanised so it's got, uh, you're going to be burning off metal there, which you don't want in your lungs. The other thing is, once you've done that, always deburr these edges because any little snaggy bits of metal will rust and then that'll set the whole edge rusting again. So you deburr the edges, which also makes it not sharp because the other universal truth is that everything here is sharp and whenever you take your gloves off or you get underneath it and sit up, you will stick your head into a sharp piece of metal and have blood coming out of wherever you've stuck yourself. Ask me how I know. Those of you nodding in agreement, um, you've done it as well. So yes, there's that little dance that we all do. And then we go, off, uh, hopefully not to hospital, but to the emergency uh, cabinet and put a plaster on it and wish we'd worn our gloves or our hard hat. Or even a woolly hat stops you doing that too. However, I digress uh, to health and safety. God, how awful. Right, yes, so make sure you run off uh, that edge there and take the little bits of metal off there so that you don't have sharp bits on it. Just a little tip as we go along, might help you, might not. If you already know, great. If you don't, might learn something. Okay, right, uh, trying a test fit on the panel I just chopped down, mooched around. Obviously this being a custom made part for the van, it should fit uh, reasonably well. I mean, you can imagine trying to make that and press it up, it would take an awful lot of time. I mean, if you've got the skill to do that and the time, excellent. But I found it much easier just buying one. Um, it's got to be a tight fit, so there comes a time where some violence is required to make things sit down properly. So you just batter them in and get them to start fitting. Resistance is futile, you will go in, etc. And there, we're starting to get towards where we really need to be with this, this setup. And that enables me to weld on the inside, so there'll be a line of burning through this section here a little bit down there and these sections all coming together which will spot weld together so I'll drill through after I made a hole with the edge joggler which can punch on one side and edge joggle on the other it's quite a useful tool that for making panels fit so you can crimp an edge and step it up uh, or you can punch a hole through it or drill a hole if you wish to um, and then you can just plug weld that so you get the equivalent of a spot weld in these areas um, because these are all going to be covered up by the seal around the door but this is an important section so I wanted that to fit down nicely that's gone down quite well I'll give it a bit more of a tap to fit uh, and that's uh, getting the step in there now I can work trying to get the test fit on the inner panel which is going to have to slide through this section here and up through there as well and then I'll see if I'm able to weld the inner panel if not 
I haven't welded anything yet, so it's just test fitting. Test fitting is very important because that way you make sure everything's where you want it to be. Otherwise, you start welding away, and the next thing is there's an inch gap at the end of it, or you know, 20 mil gap, which you don't want, where you haven't noticed, and you're trying to weld to thin air, which is always embarrassing. So do your test fitting, make sure everything fits. Then when you get the welder out, you go for it. Thin panels, small welds, dot, 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 dot. If you're lucky enough to get um, enough of thickness that you can get a, get a seam weld going, great. But always be aware you'll blow a hole through a panel eventually. Take it easy, let it cool, take your time. All right, Mr. Rubber-Headed Mallet came in super handy here. I've just test fitted that inner panel now. And I'm really glad that I fitted it up beforehand just to see how it'll go because what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp it here and then I can actually tack these this section together and because a lot of you have probably done a bit of um, panel work and body work and stuff before the thing I like about it is is that this stuff's all very flexible when it's off but the minute you start joining these panels together the rigidity comes back into it and it starts to feel like a vehicle again so it's it's always rewarding when you get to this sort of stage and also because I've done all the prep work on these beforehand, I know that this has got at least a layer of galvanizing uh, etch primer and the um, zinc primer on top as well. I know that these panels are gonna be good in all these sections. And where the rust is gonna come is where I've welded it. So think about where you weld, think about protecting that weld because that's the weak spot. Um, I overcut a little bit here, nor did myself, but that'll fill with weld. Clamp this back together. This section here now, I'm leaving it proud because that gives me something A to weld to and B then I can actually work and just cut it back to shape and shape this all up to take the seals which are all tucked nicely out of the way because ask me how I know sometimes you leave them there spark gets on them and the next thing you've got a seal on fire and then you have to replace the whole seal which is another pain in one's posterior so don't do that uh, hard lessons I've learned them Hopefully passing them on to you may assist you in your endeavours. Remember, this is not a Nescafe job. This is a triple espresso, specially made by your favourite barista job. Or if you're used to the Halfords manuals, this is a six-spanner job. So make sure you've got all the tools, make sure you know what you're doing, and make sure you've got contact with a mate who knows what he's doing for when you get into that position where you're running around like a headless chicken going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Um, so yeah friends always come in super handy on these these things so hopefully a friendly voice of me might assist you and give you the uh, enthusiasm to have a crack at this yourself just remember you need the parts and think about the job beforehand clamped it at the front here to make sure it isn't going to go anywhere nicely tucked up at the back there drainage channels are nicely open so i can get on with a bit of welding that's great so should be calling the fire brigade pretty soon excellent so, moved along, tacked all that in down there, been able to run this section in here, which means that I can actually seal this before the inner sill gets closed off. Tacked it in up there, found some more rusty bits, but that's okay. Uh, one thing I did find, obviously, we all get into um, corners, and it's a question how you get out of them that's the important thing. There was a lot of uh, filler that you will be very familiar with on these vans here. Now I hadn't anticipated welding this bit so what I did was I took my trusty drill and ran my drill just along the edge there to clear me some bare metal to weld to. It's a, a handy way of doing it and relatively quick especially and you can be accurate with it if you need to just get in and weld these sections because these were thick with uh, this uh, body filler and seam sealer so it's important to make sure you get clean metal to weld to otherwise you're wasting your time and by putting a drill through you can just get down to some metal quickly it's a bit of a bodge but the thing is it gets you out of a hole that I got into because I hadn't thought far enough ahead of the job hands up who hasn't done that probably not many of you and if you are good for you This is the mask I choose to use for spraying paint. It's low profile, 
occasionally get some drips out of the exhaust vent um, so you have to be careful if you're working on big panels but I find these very useful uh, for organic vapors made by 3M I can't remember the exact number but you can track them down um, why well, I'm wearing a mask because I'm painting why well, do I wear a mask when I'm welding because it's galvanized and galvanized will give you very very poorly fully lungs and everything else lots of zinc breathing in not good so a lot of these things may kill you straight away or they may take years to kill you so let's choose to uh, avoid that privilege by masking up um, whenever god i've done this health and safety stuff again stop it these people know what they're doing they're not idiots having watched some other videos where people are grinding without masks or goggles or gloves or anything good for them bionic people uh, a and e keeps them real busy but um, me i like to keep working if i can so it's a pest yeah on a hot day it's a pest yeah but think of the future so we were getting on with it uh, underneath i uh, managed to tack a load in there and then there was these sections here which come on focus which hadn't uh, weren't going to be filled by the the new panels so I had to make an infill part for these and also I had a section up here which I'll grind back to ensure that I've got a good continuous line for the seal to sit on. I've also welded on the other side underneath here. I don't know if you'll see that or not, probably not. I've got no idea where I'm shooting that. Um, but seam sealed on the inside as well. It's going to get seam sealed on the outside to tidy all of that up and try and stop any water getting in. Water will always get in, but you just do your best. I'll give you one guess. Um, for this part of the job, you can't have too many clamps because you need to get this thing tinked in as best you can and nice and tight so that when you do the plug welds or the spot welds, whatever you choose to do, it all zips up neatly. Uh, some other favorite useful tool or wood chisel and I've used it for skimming off metal, for taking off rough bits, for wedging to push things apart, wedging the push things together as well. I put it on the top there to lever that top section down to jam it under the seat to make sure this was nice and flush when we welded the rest of it. Um, and if you're worried about blunting your wood chisel, if you're not capable of sharpening a chisel, you shouldn't be doing this job, that's for sure. Anyway, good luck with your endeavors. Let's see how this turns out. Okay, uh, so I relented and put a weld patch into it. Now I'll smother that like most of the other work that I've done. The seam sealer to try and keep the water out. So that's been a busy old day. I was a bit too late to get to the MOT place, but I can do it in the morning. So, uh, job as it's gone. Just that making material out of the way has uh, resulted in where we started with a great gaping hole and now I need a bit of filler just to fill in that, get a little bit of filler in there and it's uh, much happier, should pass the MOT comfortably now. Good luck with your project, keep the faith. <laughs>